Hey, this is Matt. Once again, we're about to have videos and other paid requests. It's time for James. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting any type of videos, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal, usually the best bet, or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And this is for the 1994 film Richie Rich, which overall is a decent film. I won't say I loved it, but it wasn't that bad either. I've seen this a few times throughout the years. Never read the source material. I know of it. Of course, there's the notion of, you know, is Casper the ghost of Richie Rich? I think because they were made by the same company. And if you look at Casper's eyes, they kind of look like Richie Rich's eyes, but that's not the case, but it's a funny bit to think about. Now, this film is directed by uh, the guy who did Grumpy Old Men, which is a very funny movie. I do wonder in retrospect, he kind of regrets doing this because you know, this film bombed. He probably was asked to do the sequel, Grumpier Old Men, and he didn't do that. Instead, he went for this. So I wonder in retrospect, he feels that was the wrong choice. Maybe. Because this is a time when Macaulay Culkin, who stars in it, his career was not really going the best. I do like him as an actor, as in I liked him in Home Alone, even Home Alone 2. I liked The Good Son. Enjoyed him in his early work in Jacob's Ladder and Uncle Buck. But this is a time when, number one, his films were not doing that well. You had Getting Even with Dad, with Ted Danson. Uh, you had this movie. And pretty much after this movie, Bacola Tolkien had like a nine-year break from acting. Now, granted, there's probably a lot of other factors. His dad being an asshole, trying to be his agent, trying to take control of his career. His parents probably either trying to get his money or their friction they had with each other. Because he's getting older, he's not the cute kid and, oh, he did, the, he did this. Now he's getting older. Now he's almost like being put out the pasture. What's the new younger talent? For those type of roles. And. McCall Colton. He does fine. Part of me wonders. If he was the right. Kid for the role. On one end. At the time. He was the richest kid in the world. Or pretty much. Richest kid actor in the world. So. In a way it made sense. But on the flip side. His acting doesn't seem as natural compared to other movies. I think maybe like an Elijah Wood might have worked a bit better in this. Or someone like that. Like Macaulay Culkin is fine, but sometimes he seemed a bit off in his delivery. Like he didn't feel natural coming out. So, I, I don't know. But the film itself, what's interesting is you kind of live vicariously through this kid. Like, if you were the richest kid, what would you be able to have as a kid? Oh, you get to have your own McDonald's. You get to have your own roller coaster. You have a dog named Dollar with all these dollar signs on it. You have some nice furniture and set design. He's got loving pa parents. One of them is Edward Herman who's in The Lost Boys, among others. And they have like a mountain with their faces on it, all three of their faces. Dad, mom, and kid. But they seem like loving parents. But, you know, he, Richie Rich still wants friends. And they're not sure about it. Like, oh, whatever, this rich kid. He does invite them over. And, hey, look, I got my own McDonald's. I got the kid a pult And my own roller coaster. So that's kind of one of the bases is that he wants to have friends. The other is he got John Larroquette, who is great. I would say John Larroquette is my favorite part of the movie. I do like him as an actor. He's a lot of fun as the villain. He could play slimy and sleazy very well, very naturally. And he pretty much has this bit where he wants to get rid of the these this family. So they get on a plane, but Richie Rich stays behind. So the other two supposedly get rid of, but instead they're playing crashes and they're waiting for help. Meanwhile, 
and they're adrift. The parents are adrift at sea, while Richie Rich is taking care of, her, of his dad's company with the help of his new friends, while John Larroquette is stressing out, figure out what to do next. And like I said, there's some fun bits of like I said, seeing just how rich this kid is. I think the cast helps the butler, Tad Barry, played by Jonathan Hyde, who I remember he was in Jumanji, among others. He's definitely a butler you could get behind in that ranking of butlers, like Alfred with Batman. Definitely a guy that you just see being very... That he cares about Richie Rich a lot, that he really cares for his well-being. And I thought he fit naturally into the part. He's also, I think, one of the better parts of the movie. His reactions to certain situ certain situations. There's a bit where he's put in jail because John Larroquette fucks him over to get him out of the way. So Richie Richard them will try to get this toothpaste to him to help with the bars. And he puts the stuff on and he realizes, wow. And the certain lines he dialogue he says during that scene is very dry. And they come off as rather funny because of how dry he says some of this bits of dialogue. So he's definitely a, a good choice. I think maybe one of the reasons this film didn't do as well, maybe people at the time, they were a bit not as charmed by Macaulay Culkin as they were a few years prior with Home Alone. But also, like, Richie Rich was a popular comic, but I don't know, I don't know how many people knew of Richie Rich at that time. Of course, I say say they about Casper, but Casper came out a year later and did a bit better financially. But that one at least is more of a effects movie that people could look at eye candy wise and that in, in that way, in that fashion. Even if you say, well yeah, enough people knew about Richie Rich, I don't know how many of them have really read the comet that much. Or maybe it's easier to read it a comet comic, but is it easy to sympathize with a rich kid like you see this kid have all this great stuff that they have do you as an audience member go on this fucking kid oh poor me I don't have any friends kid you have Claudia Schiffer as your aerobics instructor and you look at her ass which would be cancelled today and be called sexist <laughs> by PC pussies you got Reggie Jackson as your Baseball coach. I did. You got your own McDonald's. You have a section in the mansion that's a laboratory, where the the scientist there, who's your buddy, has a Robo B. With you done with early stages of CGI for 1994. I mean, like, what the fuck do you have to complain about, kid? You got your own. They have a, all this. High tech stuff you can fucking build and play with. You got your own roller coaster. What's boo fucking who? And that's the thing, like Macaulay Culkin. It seems like Richard Rich should be having this range of emotions, but it, it didn't seem like he did that great in showing all those range of emotions. When you watch just his performance, he seems to be struggling. In certain bits here and there. But you look back. You really see him more endearing and being steered. And like you look at his performance in the first Home Alone. It seems like a better performance than it is in Richie Rich. I know I'm dodging on the guy. But like of his early work. Because I don't remember a damn thing about dating even with dad. I thought he was actually rather good in The Good Son. Here, it's not that great. Yeah, I would say it's his weakest performance of his early work. I, I, I could be fine with it because I like the actor, but at the same time, I can't say it was his strongest moment of acting in that movie. And also, like, the whole bit with these kids who become his friends, you don't, really, you don't really get to know them that well. 
you just see them playing baseball and then at one point they're invited and you find out that Cadbury or whoever paid them to go there but then all of a sudden they actually do want to hang out with Richie and they actually do want to be his friend which is like I don't buy that transition and there's really not much to even describe these kids one's fat and so he likes food a lot he's either gets too many dumbbells or he's always eaten one's a girl who may have an inkling liking the Richie Rich maybe if so it's like the bears of hints And like I say, you don't really get much development of those characters. They're kind of just there for being their sake. I guess, hey, that the him trying to save his parents and that wasn't enough. We got to have some kind of thing where, well, how do we feel sorry for this kid? He wants friends. Okay, well, there you go. So like I said, all the little details of being rich... The, again, the, the look of the doll, the set design, having these familiar people be at your service. That's fun to see. Again, it's, it's kind of nice to see as a almost like a weird wish fulfillment. Like if I was a kid, I would want... Hell, right now I would want my own McDonald's. I would want my own roller coaster. But at the same time, like it's kind of hard to feel bad for a kid when he's got all this stuff so like it's kind of hard to think of him as an underdog you know in a weird way but I say it's the the I think the supporting cast helped makes it a, a watchable pretty decent affair like I said Jonathan Hyde is Cadbury he's very likable uh, you appreciate his loyalty to Richie Rich John Larkin is having fun like when the parents he wants whatever's in the vault, the safe that's in this mountain. He's hoping it's a lot of money. And he's able to get Edward Herman and the wife there. And they got to open this door. And they've seen this song to open the door. And so John Laird has just looked at him and go, Thank you, Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> and he's exasperated at what's in the safe. And it just, he's very entertaining as a villain. I'm sure the reason he took the job was, hey, he probably thought it'd be a hit film. Because it's more called Culkin. This kid's had a lot of hit movies. The director's done Grumpy Old Men. And that was a hit movie. But unfortunately that wasn't the case. <laughs> Just like John Larroquette. He didn't get to do a whole lot of movies. He's mostly, mostly known for TV. Night Court. There's a bit he had the John Larroquette show. I know Night Court been brought back. I haven't seen it. But it's like. Most of the cast is dead, so what's the point of bringing back Night Court when most of the fucking cast is dead? Harry Anderson, Richard Mole. Hey, what do I know? Night Court is one of those shows that I don't know if there's DVD sets, but if so, maybe I'd like to pick up at least one season one day. It's been a long time since I watched that show. Now I got the themes on stuck in my head. See, was there any, sometimes I write little notes, maybe there's a line of dialogue that I don't want to forget. Uh, yeah, when the parents went down, downtown, when they went, when their plane went down and they're off at sea, Richie was just taking care of the company and they're dealing with these candy bars. Or oh, the finale where the bad guy is trying to laser them off the mountain. So you get a little bit of explosions and a little bit of a little bit of action. Same with there's a point where the kids are caught and they're ready to be turned to garbage pretty much. And the scientist is able to get Robo B to defeat the bad guy and zap him in the ass. That's one thing I do appreciate. There's not a whole lot of juvenile dads in terms of fart jokes or pute jokes or they didn't go really into that category into that type of humor which I, I did appreciate so at the end of the day it's an okay film it's a watchable you know decent film 
Definitely not the director's best work. I definitely would say I prefer Grumpy Old Men. And uh, I can't remember what else the director did. Let me look that up real quick. Uh, yeah, let me just see what else that guy has done. Because I don't remember the damn guy's name. Blaze like said it, it did develop a bit of a cult following, I believe. Although I can't remember the last time someone's mentioned this movie. Like I said, it's not a horrible, terrible movie, but it's just not a film I rewatch much. Donald Petrie. He did Missed It Pizza, Opportunity Knocks with Dana Carvey, Grumpy Old Men. He did two films this year The Favor with Brad Pitt, Bill Pullman, and Ken Wall. And that was a flop. And this film cost $40 million. And how much did it make? $38 million in the U.S. But apparently it was a big success on home video. So, they definitely made a chunk on home video, so... Richie Rich's Christmas Rich is a 1998, 1998 direct-to-video sequel starring David Gallagher in the title role. Yeah, that was the thing about this, though. Getting back on track. I think Macaulay Culkin like, had a bit more emotion to his performance. Because he's pretty... kind of the same expression. and Like I said, I don't know why he doesn't show a lot of emotion. That's what I mean. Like His acting is... He's a bit off in this. And maybe that's why. He's just not showing a lot of emotion throughout the movie, which I thought was kind of weird. But I don't know if he was just told to do that or, or what the deal was. But like I said, maybe with a different actor, it could have been even more funnier or more into it. I don't know. But as is, I've seen much worse. It is a decent movie. With that said, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.